Send out your light and your truth, that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, Keep you in everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, and to the Son, and to, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and, and will be forever. forever. Amen. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore our God. Please join me in saying Psalm 100. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come into his, the divine presence with a song. Know this, the Lord and the Lord is God, the one made us and to whom we belong. We are God's people, the sheep of God's pasture. Enter the gates of the Lord with thanksgiving, into the courts with praise. Give thanks to God and call upon the name of the Lord. For the Lord is good, whose steadfast love is everlasting, and whose faithfulness endures from age to age. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power? God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, 
far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet, and he has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Please join me in saying the Venite on page four in your bulletin. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before the presence of the Lord with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to God with psalms. For you, O Lord, are a great God and a great sovereign above all gods. In your hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are yours also. The sea is yours, for you made it, and your hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For you are our God, and we are the people of your pasture, and the sheep of your hand. Oh, that today we would hearken to your voice. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus said, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory, and all the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand, and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that you, we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on his left hand, You that are cursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment for the righteous into eternal life. This ends the reading. Thanks be to God. In the name of the one true and living God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer, amen. If you have not yet looked at the bulletin cover and realized that it's an interactive video, I invite you to do so now before you listen to my sermon so that you understand what my sermon is headed towards. Uh, just click on the link. I apologize for the uh, advertisement that precedes the video. We couldn't figure out how to delete that. I would be interested though in knowing if we all get the same video, the same advertisement in the video, 
or whether the almighty algorithm figures out a different video, a different advertisement for you and for me. So let me know what ad you get so that we can compare notes and see if we all get the same one. The video was sent to me and I so got so much out of it, so enjoyed it, smiled, the sweetness in it was wonderful that I wanted to share it with all of you and it just fit into today's gospel readings so please take a moment, listen to the, and watch the video before you listen to the rest of my sermon. Now where are you off to? I'm going to find God. Ah, I see. Well, dinner's at six. Don't be late. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Oh. Did you find him? God is a woman, Mom. And she has the most beautiful smile I've ever seen. Why are you in such a good mood? I just ate Twinkies in the park with God. <laughs> He's much younger than I expected. The video is about finding God and seeking God while God wills to be found. The question in the gospel from the righteous is, when, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty and welcome you? And Jesus' answer is, when you fed and welcomed the least of my family, you fed and welcomed me. The point is that when we find our identity as wrapped in God, good stuff just flows from us. The kindness and generosity that we ourselves are enveloped in and in our identity as child of God just is like effervescence. It just overflows and fills everything in our life. The psalmist asks a question where can I go and not find God? So Jesus asks, when did, we, when did we see you? The little boy asks or says, I'm going to go and find God. The psalmist asks, where can you go that God is not already there? And if I climb to the highest mountain, God is there. And I may be awe awestruck by the wonder of creation and have my breath taken away by the immensity of God and my own smallness. But that may also be very heartwarming as I understand that I am a part of that great, broad, limitless experience of God. And that my own limitations when I live and move and have my being in God, my entire identity, my limitations don't matter. That you and I, in our individual search, 
as we find, as it is revealed, we move with God. And that effervescent overflowing of love and kindness and generosity just comes. By the same token, the psalmist says, if I find myself in Sheol, God is there with me as well. God is in the loving hands that reach out in the darkness to guide me, to hold me close, like velvet against my cheek. And in that, we find hope. A reading from Ephesians this morning says that we search for God so that with the eyes of our heart enlightened, we may know what is the hope to which Jesus has called us. Ezekiel reminds us that while we are wandering and wondering if God is even a part of this complicated existence, God is searching for us. In the 21st century, 21 centuries after Jesus was crucified and resurrected, we wonder, will he ever come back? We live in hope, and our hope is nurtured and sustained by the seeking and finding of God in all things, in all people, by allowing the hopefulness to enlighten our hearts and guide us into new beginnings, new relationships, where we feed and welcome. Go out looking for God, seek God, and be surprised, be amazed, and be filled with hope. When we are steeped in and saturated with the loving God, then we are at one with God and our neighbor. Jesus is a, a holistic healer. Wholeness and completeness is found in the seeking of God. If you remember from a few weeks ago, we talked about the, the greatest commandment, the first and greatest commandment, being to love God with all our heart and soul and mind. And the second, like it, to love our neighbor as ourselves. We can't get those in reverse order. We need to get to love God first, because in loving God first, we find our identity, our ability to tap into that living water that Jesus spoke of to the Samaritan woman, that living water that constantly restores our spirits. Without that, we can't do the work that God has called us to. We can't go out into the world and feed and welcome everyone we meet. These parables are about the choices that you and I make, and they indicate the need for our participation in the bringing about of the kingdom of God. The heart of heart find darkness. The enlightened heart is filled with hope, hopefulness. The gifts of the Spirit are joy and generosity and kindness. We are invited to move from darkness and fear to hopelessness, to hopefulness and joy. The decision to go out and search for God is ours. Sitting on a park bench, Sharing Twinkies with God changes us. We are called to go in search of God, to first find ourselves, to, to steep in wonder, awesomeness, and immensity of God's smile, and then carry the beauty of that smile into all aspects of our world. I invite you to go in search of God and to share your Twinkies. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord.
Please join us in saying the Apostles' Creed as found in your bulletin on page 6. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. We pray for all those suffering with COVID-19, those who are quarantined, and those anxious in the uncertainty of the constantly evolving pandemic. We pray for all those struggling to overcome violence in our communities, for peacemakers, peacekeepers, and peace seekers. We pray for all police officers. May they be filled with hope and be kept safely in God's care. We pray for peace and unity among us as we seek a new way forward as people of faith. We pray for our nation as we move forward after our national election. May we work to build harmony within our nation. We pray for those who are in the hospital or home, recuperating especially Laura, Laura Amity, Amity, Yumi, Linda, Ronald, Ronald Max, Anne, Anne, Kathy, Barbara, Ellie, Stephen, Martha, and Shalom. We pray for those who are homebound. Esmeralda, Margaret, John and Lee, Dorothy, Ronald, Jim, Marge, Joe, Carolyn, Deanna, Bill and Dorothy. We pray for those struggling with chronic illness, especially Liz and Jeff, Andrew, Rena, Rebecca, Vince, Sarah, Annalise, Martha, Gerald, Marilyn, Joyce, Paul, Eileen, Jason, and Jeff. We pray for Edwin Sanchez and the students at El Hovar School and the American Friends of the Episcopal Diocese of Jerusalem. We pray for those who have died, especially the over 230,000 in this country who have died from COVID-19. We pray for those in our hearts whom we now name, either silently or aloud. Please join me in saying the collect for the day found at the bottom of page eight in your bulletin. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I draw your attention to the announcements as printed in the bulletin. There will be a stewardship update as we strive to achieve our goal of $120,000. I thank you all for your offerings and for your pledges. I invite you to join us for noonday prayer on Tuesdays and for Bible study on Wednesdays at 11. I hope that uh, 
as we work towards building our Christmas pageant. Uh, those of you who would like to participate, give me a call uh, or send me an email at mothermarystjohns at gmail.com. May the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.